Welcome to the Mater Mother's short introduction to gestational diabetes. You've recently been diagnosed with gestational diabetes, also known as GDM. You probably have a lot of questions. This short video will step you through the most up-to-date information about diet and GDM before you see the dietitian and diabetes educator. This video does not cover pre-existing diabetes, type 1 and type 2, but much of the information is relevant for women with these conditions as well. Each of these dots represents 1,000 births. In Queensland, about 70,000 women have a baby each year, represented by all of these dots. Around 10% of women get GDM. This is about 15,000 women a year. One third to one half of the 15,000 women each year will go on to develop permanent or type 2 diabetes within 5 to 10 years of their pregnancy. This risk is greatly reduced through following a healthy diet and lifestyle during and after pregnancy. Risk is further reduced if you're able to breastfeed for at least nine months. We will provide you support in achieving all of these lifestyle behaviours. This information that we cover today is also covered in your Healthy Eating for Gestational Diabetes booklet that you will receive at today's clinic visit. What is gestational diabetes? Diabetes is a condition where the level of glucose in the blood is too high. GDM occurs due to changes to normal hormone levels during pregnancy. Our body runs on glucose which comes from some of the food we eat. It's like fuel for a car. Just like a car where the fuel goes into the fuel tank, glucose goes into our fuel tank, our bloodstream, before it moves into our engine, our muscles. Fuel can't get into an engine without a key. Our key is insulin, which is a hormone that comes from the pancreas. With GDM, it's like some of our keys are bent. Our insulin doesn't work as well to move our fuel from our bloodstream into our muscles. This means glucose builds up to abnormally high levels in our bloodstream. It's important to note that your baby will not be born with diabetes, but they will have an increased risk of developing it when they grow up if your diet and lifestyle and blood glucose levels are not managed well in pregnancy. Normally your food provides glucose and other nutrients for your baby. Glucose and nutrients cross your placenta into the baby's bloodstream. Your baby will receive a normal amount of glucose if your blood glucose levels are normal and will receive high amounts of glucose if your glucose levels are high. High amounts of glucose can change your baby's growth and development and may cause some negative outcomes during delivery and later in life. This may result in the baby needing some monitoring after birth, either in the postnatal ward or in some cases a special care nursery. Our clinic will teach you how to monitor and manage the amount of glucose in your bloodstream to help keep it at normal levels. You'll be given target levels to help minimise complications for you and baby. While some women may need medication, many can manage their GDM by modifying their lifestyles through exercise and healthy eating. The good news is, with good management of GDM, risks of complications are significantly reduced. Question time. On a piece of paper in front of you, write down the answer to these questions. Why is it important to manage my GDM? Is it A, to reduce my risk of developing type 2 diabetes? B, to reduce my baby's risk of developing type 2 diabetes, C, to reduce the risk of my baby growing too big, or D, all of the above. So write down the answer that you think is correct and we'll discuss your responses at the end of this presentation. What do I have to eat with GDM? You may have heard the words carbohydrate, fat and protein. These are the main parts of our food found in various amounts and combinations, as shown on this plate, the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating. When a woman is diagnosed with GDM, the focus is on the balance between the proportion of carbohydrate, protein, and fats. This is to ensure that you manage the amount of glucose going into your blood, but also get the right vitamins and minerals for a healthy pregnancy. Let's have a look at this in more detail. Know your carbohydrate foods. Carbohydrate is the main nutrient that affects the level of glucose that goes into our bloodstream. So it is important to know a little more about it. Carbohydrate is found in many of our foods, especially breads and cereals and foods made from grains, such as wheat, semolina, barley, rice and pasta, vegetables, such as potato, 
sweet potato, corn and legumes and lentils, fruit and dairy foods like milk, yogurt and custard, though not cheese. Sugar is a carbohydrate, therefore foods and drinks such as cakes, biscuits, lollies, chocolate and soft drink also contain carbohydrate. Obviously some of these foods are better choices than other ones. There are other foods that contain very little carbohydrate, therefore have a minimal effect on your blood glucose levels. These include passion fruit and berries, plain meats, chicken, fish, eggs, cheese and nuts, fats and oils, and all salad and other vegetables, except for potato, sweet potato, corn and legumes. GDM diet essentials. Carbohydrates are in many foods. Include carbohydrate in each meal and snack. Aim to eat every two and a half to three hours. Aim to eat similar amounts of carbohydrate across meals. A good way to measure carbohydrates is to think of them as exchanges that you mix and match over meals. This might look like cereal or toast for breakfast, a sandwich and piece of fruit for lunch, and some potato, pasta or rice at your evening meal. A small carbohydrate containing snack between your meals, such as a piece of fruit or a small tub of yogurt, is also okay. Some women think that it is best to cut out most or all carbohydrate from their diet to control their blood glucose levels. This is not recommended, as by doing so, it can have adverse effects for your baby, such as poor growth, and influence their health later in life. Your dietitian will help you adapt the foods you eat and like to fit in with these goals. We need to balance the amounts and types of these foods eaten during your pregnancy so that you and your bub are as healthy as possible. As a general rule of thumb, getting the balance right is easier if you include half your plate as vegetables or salad. Remember, these are the ones with very little carbohydrate in them. And no more than a quarter as carbohydrate. Where possible, a quarter as a protein food, such as meat, chicken, fish, eggs or tofu is also good to include. At your clinic visit, your dietitian will talk to you further about what are the better types of carbohydrate to include in your diet. You may have heard the term low glycemic index or low GI foods. These are better choice carbohydrates. Some good changes to make include using multigrain or rye bread rather than white or wholemeal, crackers based on whole grains or seeds rather than highly processed biscuits, pasta, noodles or basmati or dungara rice over white or brown rice, sweet potato rather than white potato. It is important to remember when making your swaps that you should keep these to normal serve sizes and not increase the amounts. Refined carbohydrates such as cakes, lollies, chocolate and soft drinks should be avoided. Water is the best choice as a drink. Question time. Write your answer down on your piece of paper. What type of diet is recommended for GDM? Is it A, no carbohydrate, B, low carbohydrate, or C, low GI carbohydrate? Write your answer down and we'll discuss it at the end of the presentation. You were given a booklet about healthy eating in pregnancy. This would have been included in your information pack you received when you had your first antenatal appointment. This booklet contains the most up-to-date pregnancy information on a balanced diet, vitamins and minerals, managing diet-related pregnancy symptoms and weight gain for the healthiest pregnancy possible, depending on your pre-pregnancy weight. There are also activities and tools to help you eat the right amounts of fruits and vegetables and gain appropriate weight. It will help you change what you know into how. There is also information from your physiotherapist on the best physical activity activities for your pregnancy and recommendations on how much to do. This will also help manage your blood glucose levels. 
All of this information remains relevant to you and is consistent with the lifestyle needs for GDM. As well as following a healthy lifestyle during pregnancy, it is important to maintain these healthy eating behaviours for your, after your pregnancy too. Once baby comes, we recommend you repeat your oral glucose tolerance test 6 to 12 weeks later with your GP. This will help both yourself and your family doctor to plan for ongoing care of your health. If the test is normal, you should plan to have a repeat glucose tolerance screen every one to two years, about the same time you have a pap smear. This is very important as studies show that women who have had gestational diabetes are at risk of developing it again in future pregnancies. And half the women who have had GDM may go on to develop type 2 diabetes later in life. This risk is reduced dramatically by continuing a healthy lifestyle after your pregnancy through breastfeeding your baby and undertaking regular exercise and including healthy eating and maintaining a healthy weight. Just a question now. When should you repeat your oral glucose tolerance test? 6 to 12 days after my baby is born, 6 to 12 weeks after my baby is born, or 6 to 12 months after my baby is born? Write your answer down. What's next? At today's visit, you will see the dietitian and diabetes educator. The dietitian will be available after this presentation to answer any questions you may have. You will continue to see the dietitian every few weeks up until nearer to your delivery, as well as after you've had your baby. It is on these occasions that you will have the opportunity to ask further questions, as well as receive a more individualized eating plan. The diabetes educator will give you a blood glucose testing machine called a glucometer and will show you how to test your blood glucose. She will also give you target levels and other information to help manage your gestational diabetes. You will also receive a new schedule of visits outlining when you will see the doctors, the diabetes educator and the dietitian. We look forward to seeing you at your next clinic visit to work with you to tailor your diet and exercise to help you have the healthiest pregnancy possible. The quiz answers now. Why is it important to manage my GDM? D, all of the above. What type of diet is recommended for GDM? C, a low GI carbohydrate diet. And when should I repeat my oral glucose tolerance test? B, six to 12 weeks after my baby is born. Thank you.